Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. I'm super excited to have you here. My name is Ashley. I wanted to sit down today and film a first impressions video for you guys because I recently purchased a whole bunch of drugstore makeup at Ulta. Some things that I'm super excited to try out for you guys. Um, the first thing that I got that I was like so like lusting after and took all my willpower not to use was this ColourPop Give It To Me Straight Palette. It's super pretty very up my alley with like the purples and plums you have some great neutrals um, so that was really exciting I hope that you guys enjoy my first impressions this is the first time I filmed, filmed a video like this but I love watching first impressions so I hope you guys do as well if you don't follow me already make sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook I'll link them below in the comment section and if you're not subscribed don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification so you can receive an update every time I upload a video and if you're interested to see how I get this look and what I think about the products that I use to get this look then let's just get started so to prep our skin for the foundation we're gonna try today I didn't pick up a new primer so we're gonna use one that I love this is the L'Oreal matte lock primer this one is really great if you have oily or combo skin because it keeps your skin super matte and poreless so I'm gonna take about a pea size amount and then I'm just gonna start this in the cheek area, my nose, and my forehead, since that's where I tend to get the most oily and I have like the most pore issues. So I like to start there and then gently rub it towards the outer edges of the skin. So I did a quick poll on Instagram today to see which foundation you guys wanted me to try out between the LA Pro Matte Foundation and the Makeup Revolution and the LA Girl One. It was really close though, it was neck and neck. So I'm gonna try this out for you guys. I'm gonna do half my face with a beauty blender and then half my face with a flat top brush just to see how it applies. So I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna pump it on my finger. And I hope this color matches because it was really hard to tell. The bottle is a little bit like, um, what's that called? It's like frosted. So it's really hard to see exactly what color it is, but this looks like it will be a good match. So for half my face, I'm going to go in with my Beauty Blender. And I'm kind of having like bad skin right now and I don't know why. Um, I haven't really been switching out my skincare, which can usually be a cause. Um, but maybe because it's like getting warmer out and you're sweating more, I don't know. So first impressions from applying this with a sponge. It looks really nice. It's a little bit dark. The coverage is super good. And it looks really natural, but I feel like this foundation dries super quick, so maybe I shouldn't have um, just dotted this all over my face, but I really like it so far with this sponge. And it's a very matte finish, it's not satin. It's true, a true matte. And I haven't really been enjoying applying my foundation with brushes recently just because I feel like sometimes it looks super cakey and looks like can leave streaks. But yeah, I can tell already that I don't like this foundation with a brush. I prefer a sponge. It is looking a little bit streaky. And like you can see, I have some breakouts here that covered, I think, better than over here. So whenever I use a flat top brush, I like to press it into my skin and then kind of buff it once it's pressed into the skin, because that kind of gives you the most coverage. But yeah, I hate it with the brush. So I'm just going to go back in with my Beauty Blender because that's a better way for me to apply this foundation. And... I would definitely recommend kind of doing this in sections with your beauty blender just because it does dry pretty quickly. It almost reminds me of Estee Lauder Double Wear which if you have been following me you know that's kind of my ride or die foundation. It's been my holy grail for like years. It's so good. So my overall first impression. I think it's really nice. It is very full coverage. Um, I do see some breakouts kind of peeking through and a little bit of redness. So I'm going to just go in with a little bit more and see 
what it looks like when we add a little bit more. I think this foundation would be super nice for summer if you're going out to an event or if you like are going somewhere and you know it's going to be super hot and you want your makeup to stay, I feel like this is a really good foundation for that. But I think that's kind of as good as we're going to get. But I also wouldn't want to like apply two layers of this because I feel like it can get cakey really fast. And then for concealer today, um, I picked up the LA Girl Pro Concealer as well. Um, and then I also picked up the NYX concealer, so I'm going to try maybe both of them. I'm going to just squeeze. I've heard so many good things about this concealer. And I picked up all of my LA Girl stuff from Ulta, and they had a pretty good selection of products. My first impression is that this is concealer is thick. It's really thick, but we'll see how it blends out. I don't know how I feel about it for under eyes, just because I usually like more of a thinner consistency because I don't want it to look super cakey, but we'll see. Give it a fair shot. I think the color is a really good match. It seems to be blending out pretty smoothly. I feel like I could have gone maybe one shade lighter just because I really like a bright under eye. I mean, this coverage is pretty great. You can see I have some discoloration and redness on my eyelid and it just covers it right up. And I didn't pick up a new drugstore powder today, so we're going to take the Cody Airspun um, powder. This is a favorite of mine, and this is in the shade Translucent. I'm going to take my beauty blender and just dab some underneath my eyes. And I can tell this concealer, you got to set it right after you place it because it does settle into fine lines if you let it sit for too, too long. And then I'm not going to use the eyeshadow primer today, so I'm just going to set my eyelids. And since we primed them with um, concealer, we should be good. And then I'm just going to set my T-zone, take the excess on my nose, and then my chin anywhere we had breakouts. And then, no new drugstore bronzer, but it's no surprise, you know, I'm going to take the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. It's just seriously been my favorite. I'm not going to contour, I'm just going to lightly bronze the face. If you guys have had any new drugstore bronzer favorites, comment them below because I'm kind of having a moment with bronzer. Sometimes I like don't use it at all and then sometimes I'm like obsessed and then use it like setting powder. <laughs> Maybe because I'm so pasty. And then for blush today I'm going to take the Enchanted Paradise blush. This is scented like P. 
peach and this is in the shade bashful it almost oh it smells so good it smells like peach it almost reminds me of um nars's orgasm a little bit it has like a little a light sheen to it Ooh, that's really pretty it's pigmented but not like scary over pigmented when you first apply it and you're like look like a clown oh my god this is really pretty okay l'oreal i see you though it's a really pretty like peachy summery everyday color and i didn't pick up a new highlighter but i'm gonna take this wet and wild highlighter this is in the shade blossom glow this is a really pretty like almost duochrome pinky highlighter i've been obsessed with it Ooh, look at that i know i'm wearing kind of a warm tone blush but i don't care seriously this highlighter is so pretty you can't put it down and i'm not usually into like pinky based highlighters even though i'm really fair just don't love them but this has like a little hint of lavender and like lilac if you see that Ooh, it's just so pretty i love it okay i'm super excited to try out the give it to me straight palette by ColourPop. i know this isn't new but i've never tried their pressed shadows and i saw this at ulta and i was like hold up how did i not know about this like these plummy purple shades are really pretty and then you have some like gold and then transitions and neutrals so I think this could be a staple palette for people because there's a little bit of everything. So I'm going to start out and take the shade Downright right here. I'm taking this on a crease brush and I'm just going to place this in my crease. First impressions, pigmented. I'm not surprised because all of ColourPop shadows are super pigmented, Ooh, but there's a lot of kickback. Like I barely tapped my brush in there, and so maybe, I mean, I kind of have a habit of tapping off eyeshadow on like the side of my palette just because I don't want fallout. So that's kind of a ritual for me when doing my eyeshadow, so I would recommend doing that with this palette. But this transition color is really pretty. It's like a pinky, brownish almost. I don't even know if it's going to show up on camera. The only thing is I wish this palette had a mirror, but it's not a deal breaker for me. But the shadow seems to be blending out really well. It's very pigmented. It's a pretty transition shade and it's like in the pinky purple family. And then I think I'm going to go in with forthright this color is really pretty speaking to me so I'm taking this on like a flat shader brush and I'm just going to ooh, yes look at that that is a really pretty shade I'm just gonna pack this all over my lid and I'm not gonna really worry too much about it being messy because we'll we'll go in and blend this is pretty. This is like a rusty purple shade. Okay. And I'm going to take the other side of that crease brush that we were just using. I'm going to blend this out. I will say that I think I prefer the pressed shadows from ColourPop than the Super Shock ones because those you have to use your fingers and I feel like if you want to do like a smoky eye like this, it's really hard because you have to blend it out with your finger. And, like, I don't know about you, but I have big fingers, so it's hard to blend. Um, and then I feel like when you go in with a brush, it totally wipes away the entire color. And I'm like, well, the only way I use them really is if I'm just looking for, like, a all-over shade. Like, a one-and-done type of look, which I don't mind. But, like, some of the really smoky shades, it's hard to do that because you feel like it's not blended well. That's a really pretty color. Okay. Then I'm going to go in and take TMI on the same crease brush. And I'm going to pack this on the outer corner. So I like to do like a little triangle. So I always go down and then up and then blend inwards into the inner corner.
And these shadows would be really pretty wet, like the, the shade color forthright that we took all over the lid. If you use some like Fix Plus or setting spray and dampen that before putting it on, it would be like show stopping pretty. And then I'm going to take straight up on the other side of that flat side and I'm just going to press this on the center of the eye just to bring a little light. And then I'm going to take a clean and take a clean fluffy brush. It's really fluffy and I'm just going to go ahead and blend out the edges. I'm holding it at the very end, not putting too much pressure because I don't want to blend away too much color, but I just want it to look really seamless. And then I'm going to take oops, my little highlighting shade and I'm going to go in with Matter of Fact. So I'm going to place this underneath the brow bone as a little highlight. And then I'm going to take up front, I'm going to put this on the inner corner. I love me a good inner corner highlight and that is poppin. If you ever apply too much inner corner highlight, just take your ring finger and press it in like that to blend it and it will blend it out really nicely. I feel like I want to do something on the lower lash line, so I'm going to go in with like a flat um, shader brush and I'm going to go in with Be Blunt, which is like this really pretty purpley shade. And I'm just going to run this across the lower lash line. Nothing too crazy. It's a really pretty look. I like it. I like it. And then I got the Wet n Wild Ultra Slim Mascara. I got this for my lower lash line because um, I always smudge mascara on my lower lash line and I like wanted to find something with a really thin brush, but I figured since I'm filming a first impression in this video, why not use it all over the eye? Yeah. So my first impressions are this brush is really, really skinny, which I like, and it gives you quite a bit of length. I mean, I wasn't expecting anything too crazy out of this because I really just want it for my lower lash line, but I'm not mad at it. It's really easy. I like that the wand is kind of like, like it's not so firm, so it's easy to kind of get in there and wiggle um, without feeling like you're going to poke yourself in the eye, which I feel like is the forever struggle of lower lash line mascara. I also like this because it's like not too much. Sometimes you don't want spidery lower lashes and it's easy to get there with just regular mascara. And then for brows, I picked up the new Maybelline Tattoo Studio Brow Gel. I don't know, I'm kind of nervous about this because it's supposed to be like um, a super stay for your brows. Like, it's supposed to have like a 12 hour wear, I think, which is kind of scary. Um, my first impressions is that I don't know how I feel about this applicator. Like, it's rounded and kind of fuzzy. I don't know. I feel like this could go south really quick. But here we go. We're going to try it. And I got the shade. What shade are you? Soft brown. <laughs> My first impressions is it's very large and kind of difficult to get a defined brow. And it seems like a lot of product comes up off the front, so be wary of that. But the color I think is a good match. I wish that this was just a little bit smaller because 
So this on this brow, I kind of wiped off the excess product before coming in, and I'm very, applying very light, light pressure. But you can kind of like point it up like this and flick it so that you get the brow like hairs, which is kind of nice. I definitely think these are like for bolder brow days, not like if you're looking for a natural brow or like if you like really defined full brows, this is probably like good for you. I respect it. But before it dries, I'm going to go in with my brush and just kind of brush through the brows and it definitely feels thick. I normally don't do my brows this thick, so it definitely looks weird to me. What do you guys think? So the bro brows are definitely thick, but um, we're going to see. It's definitely very long wearing, I can tell. I was just using this like brush to kind of comb through the ends and it's not really budging like not too much color is coming off but if you like a really bold brow girl you may like these um it definitely looks like it's gonna wear for a long time so that's always good for the summer um maybe i just need to get like a lighter shade too because this looks a little bit dark especially that like my hair is getting lighter for the summer so maybe maybe i'll get like a taupe and then for lips today i picked up quite a few new lippies from the drugstore. I picked up the Maybelline Vivid Hot Lacquer Glosses because I've really been into lip glosses lately. Also the LA Girl Lippy Style. Got this really pretty like mauve plum shade. And then I also got this NYX Lingerie Glitter. And this is in the shade Shy. So I think I might do these two together because I'm doing like kind of a purpley look. And this LA Girl is like a twist up lip pencil. But like I don't think you can bring it back down, so don't twist it up too, too much. It is really creamy. It, this has a smell. It reminds me of something, but I can't put my finger on it. This claims one swipe intense creamy color and I would agree with it. It's pretty pigmented after one swipe. Um, it's definitely creamy. I don't know how long wearing it's going to be, but I really like it. If you don't like scented lip products, you probably won't like it because it does smell. Um, and then just to try out this glitter, I'm going to top this off, but this is like a pink glittery gloss. Ooh, that's pretty. And then to finish the look, I'm just going to set my makeup with the Pixie Glow Mist just because I love it. I love me a good glow. And that Pixie one, it's so good if you have like oily combo skin. I do, and if you like the glowy look but you have combo skin, that one's super nice because I find that it doesn't leave me like a grease ball, but it does a good job. So here's the final look, guys. What do you think? I'd love to hear what you think in the comment section below. If you don't follow me already, make sure to hit the subscribe button and leave me any comments below for a future tutorial you'd like to see. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.